Hello and welcome back. As per request of a viewer, here is a video on how to record a macro for splitting the RGB channels as separate layers. If you are interested in the details of RGB separation, I will put the link in the description below to a video explaining in detail how it works. In this video, I will go through the steps of recording this RGB split macro together with some tips and things to keep in mind while recording macros in general. Let's start by making sure we have our starting layer selected, which will be the layer we want to split into RGB channels, and then press the red record macro button. If the macro panel is not shown on your screen, remember that you can always enable it from the view studio menu. While Affinity Photo is recording a macro, it will be in recording mode. And there will be some restrictions in what you can do, which makes recording macros a bit tricky and challenging. We will tackle the restrictions one by one while we record the RGB split macro. Here is my first important tip for you. Always make sure you start recording after you selected the starting layer. This is why I mentioned earlier to select the layer first and then press record. For the RGB split, we need three copies of this layer. By using the command G keyboard shortcut, I will duplicate it three times. You could have also used the layer duplicate menu or right clicking on the layer and selecting duplicate. Now here's the next thing to keep in mind. While a macro is recording, you cannot record mouse drag actions in the layer panel. So suppose we want to move the top layer a couple of layers down. I cannot drag and drop it. We will need to use the arrange move back one to move it one position. Remember that the shortcut key command bracket open also works. Using the keyboard shortcut, I have now lowered the top layer by three positions. For the RGB split, the first copy should be turned into red, which is the current selected layer. I can do this by adding a curves layer and flattening down the blue and the green channel curves. Now comes the interesting part. I want this curves adjustment to be a child to the layer below, so it would only apply to that layer. Normally, I would drag and drop it to the layer. If I do that now, Affinity gives an error. Remember what I said? Mouse drag actions in the channel panel are not allowed while in recording mode. So how do we make the curves adjustment a child layer of the layer below? We have to use the arrange move inside menu. In this case, we are in luck. As we just created the curves layer, it is already on top of the layer we want it to move into. If that was not the case, use the command bracket keys to position the layer on top of the layer you wanted to make it a child of. We now successfully made the curves layer a child of the image layer. Here is the next tip for you. Always work in steps relative to where you are and follow the layer hierarchy. As the curves layer is still the selected layer, which is a child of the image layer, my next step would be to select its parent layer. Affinity shows a dialog confirming this. Time to select the layer above. Again, Affinity comes with a question of what should be selected. As my layer names are mostly not unique, I always prefer to select a relative movement. So in this case, select one layer above current will do. Now we have the correct layer selected for the green channel. I will add a channel mixer this time and lower the reds and the blue so only the green remains. Just as before, I will use the move inside menu to make this channel mixer adjustment a child of the image layer below. Perfect. I noticed I forgot to rename the layer below. If I click on the image layer below, Affinity doesn't know what to do. As I mentioned, you need to follow the layer hierarchy. So, following the hierarchy, we first need to select the parent layer. 
which is accepted, then we can select the red image layer as it is now in the same hierarchy level as the selected layer. Let's name it to red, so we will later know what this layer represents. I will click on the layer above and use the select layer one above current and rename this one to green. Time for the blue. I will go to the layer above and use again the select layer one above current option. After I add the channel mixer, where I lower the red and the green, to get the blue channel, I will use the move inside function just as before. Let's continue by going back to the parent and rename it to blue. Now we have our layers. Let's continue to set the correct blend modes. Blue is already selected, so I can change this blend mode to add. I will need to do the same for the green layer. After selecting the green channel with the mouse and using select one layer below current, we have the green layer selected. The green layer should also get the blend mode add. And now we have our original colors back. This brings us to the next challenging part, which is grouping them. Usually you would select the layers with the shift key pressed and group them with command G or using the arrange group from the menu. Well, you guessed it. This does not work while we are recording a macro. We need to do this in smaller steps. And here is how. Make sure the bottom layer is selected and apply the group command by pressing command G. This will put the selected layer in a group and keep the group selected. Next step will be to get the green into the group. I select the green layer by using select layer one above current. To move the green into the group, we can use the move inside function, which makes the green layer a child of the group, or in other words, it becomes a part of the group. This time, however, the green layer is selected. Before we can move to the blue layer, we need to follow the hierarchy, which is selecting the group first and then selecting the blue. After I move the blue inside the group, one final step is select the group itself. Why? Because I want this to be my end position when I apply the macro in the future. I'm now done with recording the macro and will press the stop button located in the macro panel. Let's test out. I will remove the group we just created. I have my layer selected I want to split, so let me press the play button. Perfect. It created a group with the RGB layers. Excellent. Now we can add the recorded steps to our library or export it. Keep in mind that the macro functionality in Affinity is quite limited. Once you have recorded a macro, editing is almost not possible. For example, if you wanted to change an adjustment or forgot a step during recording. As far as I know, no way to change that, which is a bummer. I usually end up recording macros multiple times until I have my perfect macro. Well. I hope you found this video useful and has helped you in understanding how macro recording works in Affinity Photo. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions or remarks. Thanks again for watching. If you like my videos, don't forget to subscribe for more videos and hit the like button. Until next time.